Welcome back. I am a programmer. In this lecture, we will learn how to return a value from threads and when do we need to return a value from threads. So the question is how we can return the value from threads. We can return a value from a thread uh, by adding a public uh, getter method which can expose the value to be used somewhere else in the code at a later point of time. So the sole purpose of returning a value from a thread is that you want to perform some operation inside the run method. And after performing the operation, you want to return that particular value back to the class which is triggering the thread and use it later in the code. So let's jump into the coding and see it in action. So please be sure you subscribe to my channel as I upload new tutorials every week. Let's create a class called reading return value task and implements runnable interface. Also, we will override the run method. So in this example, we will count the number of lines read by each thread. So let's copy paste the code from reading task ri class. And let's change this line to stream.count. And we'll store it into a counter variable. So let's define this uh, counter variable here. Okay, let's make uh, it private also. So we need one more public method which can expose this counter variable outside the class. So let's write public long number of lines and return the counter. Also, we'll add one volatile boolean variable and let's call it finish. We need this flag to identify once the run method is finished. So we are going to make this flag true okay so here if we run the program and call the number of lines method what will happen let's see through the example so this is our file and here we have uh, thread 1 2 and 3 so each thread at current state is at a different line thread 1 is reading the fifth line thread 2 is at the seventh line whereas the thread 3 has read all the lines so if we call the number of lines method now, it will return something like this. Thread 1, 5, thread 2, 7 and thread 3, 11. But the total number of lines are 11 in our case. So why there are differences in the count? This is happening because the thread 1 and 2 returning the count value before finishing its task completely. So we need to make sure that the thread complete its task before returning the count of lines. So how do we do it? Let's go back to the code and see. Let's call the wait method on the current object. Let's write synchronize on this object, this dot wait. And it is expecting an interrupt exception. Let's throw the exception. All right. So you might wonder, what does this synchronize blocks do, right? In multi-threaded applications, we may often come to a situation where multiple threads try to access the same resource and produce unpredictable results. To handle that, we can make the thread synchronous so that the resource will be used by one thread and once it finishes task, then the resource can be utilized by the another thread. Okay, now the wait method is used to put the current thread into a waiting state until the another thread invokes a notify method on it. So notify method is basically a signal to resume the waiting thread on which the notify is called. Let's call the notify method at the end of the run method. Let's go and uh, synchronous on this object. This dot notify. Now when we call this, uh, the current uh, thread will be released from the waiting state. We should also put the finish check on the wait method. If the finish uh, flag is not true, then only we call the wait method. Let's go to the main driver class. In this main method, let's create the instance of reading return value task. 
I'm gonna copy paste this two more times. Uh, let me change this instance name to read task two and three. Now I'm gonna create a thread for read task one. So let's create thread runnable thread equals new thread. Now let's pass the read task one. Set the name of the thread as read task one. And also let's invoke the start method finally. We'll copy paste this three lines one more time and change the name of the task and runnable thread from one to two. All right. And I'm gonna create one more thread, runnable thread three. And I'm gonna pass uh, read task three instance. We'll set the uh, name of the thread in a constructor itself, read task three. Let, let's invoke the start method on runnable thread three. Oops, we should follow the camel case name convention in Java. Now here, uh, we are going to return the value from the threads. So we are going to call the number of lines method here. So let's uh, uh, say system dot 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 print runnable thread dot get name have number of lines. Okay, now let's uh, call the number of lines method here. Read task one dot number of lines. It is expecting an interrupt exception. So let's add this into the main method. Okay, now fine. Let's copy paste this also two more times. Beautiful. Now let's change this renewable thread one to two and three. Okay, all right. Now it looks good. Let's add a sleep time of two seconds, like time unit dot seconds dot sleep for two seconds so that we can uh, recognize that it is counting so let's put two more seconds here so we can actually see the difference while printing we are done here let me give a space after lines all right uh, let's run it as we can see, the count of lines are 11 in each case, which means threads are completing its task before the main thread returns the count. Awesome! In next lecture, we will learn about the demon threads. See you there.